What's up guys, it's you and welcome to a new type of video that I'm, almost a new series that I'm going to be bringing here to the channel. And, um, so you guys can see this like weird slide thing that I quickly threw together in Photoshop. And you guys are probably wondering, what is this? And if you guys uh, have been hearing me talk about the LBA either on Twitter or in other videos this is what this is and first of all I apologize this video went up kinda late I had a lot of basketball going on this week so I wasn't able to get it up but regardless um, a little bit of backstory so it was early December or late November and I was in a Skype call with Dokes, Chris, Brennan and Dark Scizor and I heard Dokes talking about this thing called the LBA and um, he said it was kind of like the GBA, which was this league that uh, Magnitude put together, which is pretty cool. And if you guys don't know what it is, it's essentially fantasy Pokemon, which is right up my alley. And so I said, you know what, I'll sign up for the tryouts, and if I get in, I get in. If I don't, I don't. It's okay. Um, it's The answer is always no unless you ask. So I joined the tryouts, and I was able to rain spam my way through the entire tryouts. And uh, once I got in, there was these draft battles for new people in the draft, and we had the opportunity to work our way up to the potential 11th overall pick in our division's draft. And I thought, you know what, um, I'm just going to use my same team, and it ended up working out for me. I ended up making it all the way to number 11 in the draft, which was pretty cool. And... After I did that, I sat down and thought about my draft plan in the Aqua Division and thought about my team. I ended up naming my team the Tampa Bay Thunders, and as you can see, this is the team that I have drafted right here. Um, the draft was a 16-team draft. Yeah, 16-team draft in um, Serpentine style, which is essentially, instead of going picks 1 to 16, like the first team to the 16th team and then starting over the 16th team would get like two picks in a row so if you were the Muncie Mucks who were the 16th team uh, you would get the last pick in round one and the first pick in round two if that makes any sense at all oh by the way I will leave the link to the spreadsheet in the description below and also some draft analysis that I did with my friends uh, JJ and D train in the uh, description below it's four parts it's about an hour long um, but you guys can just like skim through if you just want to hear analysis or you can just check the spreadsheet if you want to see the other teams. But regardless, uh, this is my team that I ended up drafting. Uh, my round one pick was Clefable uh, just because I thought Clefable was a very, very versatile Pokemon. It's capable of running cleric sets. It can, uh, it has Wish, it has Soft Boiled, it has Heal Bell. Um, fairy typing is a very, very good typing. It can run like Stealth Rock, it can run Calm Mind Offensive, it can run just like Life Orb, which is pretty cool. But I do want to run like a bulky offense team, which I do have the makings of actually. And so I thought Clefable was a very, very flexible first pick and actually really liked having Clefable um, in the first round. Unfortunately, I didn't get uh, my top two target Megas, which were Mega Altaria or Mega Charizard X. Uh, but I did end up picking up Mega Gyarados, which I am pretty fond of, to be honest. I've been using it a lot more lately on Showdown, and uh, I think I've come up with some pretty cool sets to use it with this season. And um, that was my round two pick, just because, and it is going to be a pretty good win con throughout the year. Um, I do like the water typing. Uh, I think it has very good typing before and after it Mega Evolves. Also, it has Intimidate, which can help me shut down some pretty prominent um, physical attackers if I do need to do that. Um, my round three pick, um, I had to think long and hard about who I wanted for my round three pick because I knew I wanted Gengar, I knew I wanted um, Excadrill, and I looked at the draft board and said Excadrill is not going to be available next time it comes around. So I went, so I went ahead and picked up Excadrill because I, do, because I did want a spinner uh, just in case I did draft any Rocks weak Mons in addition to Gyarados, and you know just generally being able to clear away hazards it's a pretty good idea um so you don't get absolutely destroyed by stuff like sticky web or toxic spikes because i do have two poison type mods neither of them touch the ground <laughs> and um as you know excadrill is a staple i do use excadrill a lot and uh, i was very very happy with adding that to my team and my dog is whining doggy what's wrong do you need to see i have like the door to my room shut because I don't want an echo, and he just needs to get out. There we go. All right. Anyhow, uh, moving on. 
In uh, round four, I really wanted Thunders because I wanted to draft it. I wanted to draft my team's mascot, um, but unfortunately, the cards just didn't work out that way. Someone took Exodrill the round before me, and I'll actually be playing them round one. Um, more on that later. So I went ahead and drafted Gengar. Gengar was on my target list because it helps me if I want to get rocks up and spin block them. Uh, because spinners were at a uh, premium throughout the draft, so it would have been so. So it is nice to get uh, Gengar when Excadrill has already been taken, because Excadrill is like the best spinner. So um, very happy with my choice of Gengar, and uh, I think it'll help me j just because like it has a pretty good typing with the rest of my team. Um, gives me so 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 far at that point I had had two fighting weak mons, um, which were Mega Gyarados and Excadrill, and two fighting resist mons, which were Clefable and Gengar, so um, it, it kind of helped me balance some, some type synergy, and it actually worked really well on my team, but um, anyway, enough on that. Round 5, I saw that the draft was like comprised of very fat Pokemon, as you can see, especially with the Seattle Sandshrews, um, which is another team in the league. Um, the first two picks for the Sandshrews were Mega Slowbro and Chansey. Um, we have stuff like Blissey Tentacruel cores going around in the league. Blissey Tentacruel Dusclops, which is really scary. Uh, stuff like um, Mandibuzz Suicune cores, which could be potentially annoying. And generally just a really, f like, a plethora of really fat mons floating around in the league. So I went ahead and picked up Gothitelle. Because I figured, hey, you know what? If I can free up Pokemon like either Clefable or Mega Gyarados or Mega Gyarados or whoever I end up drafting later for a sweep, that would be awesome. It also helps me say, okay, um, I can prevent my opponent from knocking out a Pokemon with that mod because then it immediately allows me to come in and pick it off, which I think is a very, very valuable trait to have, especially in this style of play when you have ten mons to work with if you can say all right i can make sure that one can't do anything then i feel like that's a pretty good skill to have so i did end up picking up a uh, goth and um then i was looking at my draft board and was like wow i see a problem in the fact that i have no really fast mons and i don't have a lot of bulk so i ended up picking up gudra um one reason is because it is a water resist, and my water resist right now was Mega Gyarados, and I didn't really like that because someone did draft rain, so that's pretty scary. So I ended up picking up Gudra just because it's a very, very bulky mod. It still does have some offensive power, power, and um, it can provide kind of a backbone for my Clefable if I do want to run physically defensive Clefable with special defensive Gudra. That's pretty cool. So uh, I was free to do that. Um, and then after round six, I had picked up my first six Pokemon, and I was like, well, no duh. And I was looking at my team, and I said, I have no priority on this team. And by the way, you can only have two Legends maximum, which is why I like haven't picked up a lot of Legends. Um, so I did end up picking up Entei this round, because it does give me some priority. It's a very, very strong Pokemon, can weaken a lot of Steel types, which could otherwise give my team trouble. And like I otherwise would have to resort to really silly ways of getting past Ferrothorn, and I didn't really want to do that. So I ended up picking up Entei in uh, round seven. I think it'll be a pretty valuable member for my team because it is pretty viable or versatile, rather. Um, wrong word came out of my mouth. I use I'm, I gotta stop relying on these smoke on buzzwords. Anyway, um, have some pretty cool sets for Entei planned later in the year, but that is beside the point. Um, round seven. Uh, it is round seven, and as you can see, there are only three Pokemon left um, that I haven't talked about. Salamence, Weezing, and Seismitoad. I, I want you guys to guess right now which Mon I picked in round seven. Yeah, I'm just going to give you a couple seconds to think about it, because it's not the Mon you're thinking. I did not pick up Salamence in round seven. I picked up, or round eight, rather. Yeah, round eight. I ended up picking Weezing in round eight just because... Um, my team looked really, really Scizor weak, and I don't like that. Um, SD Roost Scizor could uh, pretty much 6 on my team if I didn't bring Entei. And I don't know what my voice did there. Just kind of woke up, so. Um, 
SD Roost Scizor could do a lot of work to my team, especially if it is Mega. And the uh, general U-turn spam uh, beat my team pretty good. So I decided to pick up Weezing just because it is a pretty cool uh, physical wall. And it does actually have a lot of synergy with other mons on my team as long as I don't bring Gengar. Uh, which I wouldn't be opposed to doing. But So I ended up picking up Weezing in round 8. And then in round 9 I picked up Salamence because... Um, I didn't see anything with a lot of speed on my team and figured, you know, Salamence is probably the best overall round 9 pick I could get. Um, stuff like Zygarde, uh, Smeargle, Metagross, uh, Ludicolo, and that kind of stuff was going off the board in round 9. So I figured, you know what, I'll pick up Salamence, it's another water resist. You can't really have too many of those, especially with rain floating around in the league. And it also gives me, like, a Dragon Dancer, which is pretty nice. But regardless... Um, in round 10, obviously there's only one Pokemon left on my board, it is a Seismitoad, and a Seismitoad is basically my rain check, because someone has Kingdra, Politoed, and Mega Swampert, and I did not like that at all, so I figured, you know what, may as well bring Seismitoad, um, it can't really hurt me, because, like, it gives me a secondary rock setter if I do, or a a third rock setter rather if I do want to do that it can counter sweep teams and rain with swift swim and uh, generally from my experiences using it in NU it's always pulled its weight so um, figured why not draft a second NU mod so I went ahead and did that um, so that is my roster for the LBA um, as I said earlier if you guys want to check out the other rosters in the LBA uh, in the aqua division or magma division the spreadsheet will be in the description below um, as well as like the standings, MVP race, uh, previous stuff, all the rules for the LBA, and um, schedules and all that will be in the description below. So I do encourage you guys to go check that out if you do want. Um, also, one la uh, actually a couple last things. I will be trying to post all my battles that I have in the LBA on my channel because I do think they are pretty good uh, commentary um, and just... I think it'll be very, very competitive. It's a different style format that takes a lot of preparation. So huge shout out um, to Tyler for putting this all together. Um, yeah. Also, um, in addition to putting up, my, my brain like stopped working there for a second. In addition to putting up all the battles, I'm gonna try to put up uh, stuff like power rankings if I can. Um, it will take a lot of time, so I'm not sure how consistently I will be able to do it. Um, I also want to put up stuff like uh, waiver wire videos and stuff like that, and ad drops, and just general league news. So I'm going to try to put up as much stuff um, about that as I can. Um, if it doesn't end up working out, then, you know, whatever. But I'm going to try my best. Also, ignore the fact that my logo is really bad. Um, I just wanted something. So, um, anyway, so that's going to go ahead and wrap up this video. If you guys did enjoy, please make sure to leave a like. It's really to help show support for the stuff that I'm doing here on the channel. Uh, also, make sure to answer today's comment question of the video, which is, are you guys hyped for LBA Season 4? Is this Season 4? If this isn't, yeah, Season 4. Um, if you guys are hyped for that, uh, make sure to tell me about it in the comment section below. Also, if you have any creative, innovative, and or counter-teaming sets, um, for any of these mons, uh, feel free to drop them in the comments. I'll probably use them. And with that, I urge you guys to subscribe if you guys are enjoying the constant content. And with that, I'll catch you on the flip-flop.